Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Because Horlicks malted milk is so energy-giving and refreshing, athletic coaches and trainers recommend it as a fine after-exercise drink. It restores the energy that has been expended by physical activity, helps the athlete to recuperate and relax. The makers of Horlicks recently received a letter from a nationally known athlete who is now head coach and athletic director of a Pennsylvania high school. This gentleman said, quote, While a member of the Los Angeles and Portland baseball clubs of the Pacific Coast League, I never fail to drink a glass of Horlicks after every game to build up lost energy. I found, in fact, that I recovered strength and energy after a glass of Horlicks faster than I did after a heavy meal. This was undoubtedly due to the easier digestibility of Horlicks. Here at the high school, my football and basketball teams enjoy Horlicks after games as much as I do. I might add that I have made it a point to tell coaches who are friends of mine about the benefits of Horlicks malted milk tablets for quick energy during timeout period. End of quote. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. You know, several days ago, not having pictures of other men to send to the female applicants of the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau, Lum decided to send out some pictures of Abner. Well, yesterday, Abner received a wire from a Miss Hortense Kelly stating that she had fallen in love with his picture and would arrive in Pine Ridge today. <laughs> As we look in on our old friend, it is early morning. We find Lum over at Abner's house trying to persuade him to go to the train to meet Miss Kelly today. Listen. Well, um, why, why can't you go in there and meet her by yourself? Well, she ain't coming to see me yet, huh? Well, about it, think she was, the way you got yourself dressed up for her. Well, natural, me being the president of the matrimonial bureau, I've got to dress myself up when we meet one of her clients this way. Yeah, well, well you, you just go in there, Lum, and tell her that fella Peabody that she's in love with to skip the country. She can't locate her. I ain't going to tell her no such a thing. What kind of a company would she think this is, letting her go to all the expense of coming all the way down here and then the man she come to see runs out on her? Man, I don't care what she thinks about the company. I ain't going to meet her and I ain't going to have a thing to do with her now. I'll just hide out from her while she's here. That's what I'll do. Well, you've got to be in there at the county seat for the trial. That Squire Skim case is set for 10 o'clock. Yeah. And we're supposed to meet uh, Hortense on the 3 o'clock train. Well, uh, Long Grandpap's going in there. You and him ought to be enough for him to try. Yeah, but we need you for a witness, Abner. If Squire Skimp wins that case, they'll take our farms and everything else away from us. Why, you've got that agreement that Squire signed saying that he'd assume all the obligations of the company. Yeah, but a body can't never tell what 12 Germans is going to do. Well, I couldn't tell them what to do if I was to go in there. They wouldn't listen to me. Come on, come on. Get up from there. I'll bargain with you just as long as I'm going to. Grandpap will be by here directly. Well... All right. I'll go into the trial, but just as quick as it's over, I'm going to come right straight back out here. You ain't going to get me down to that train to beat hard ten. Well, we'll argue about that later. Get a move on yourself. Get dressed. Well, I'm dressed. I'm ready to go any time. You ain't going in there like that on Dobby. Where's your necktie? Why, it's hanging on a dresser there. Well, put it on. Ain't going to take no pictures all the time, eh? No, but you don't want Hortense to see you without no necktie, huh? I told you that I weren't going to see Hortense. You're going to meet that train if I have to tie you and carry you down there. Well, now, Lum, if Elizabeth finds out that I went to the train to meet some other woman, why, there just ain't no telling what she would do. Abner, I told you Elizabeth will never find out about it. I've done made arrangements for Hortense to stay over with Sister Simpson as far as you hear. Yeah, and she was just about to tell Sister Simpson that she'd come out here to see me, and then Sister Simpson would break her neck to ride Elizabeth, and I've been advertising for a while. No, 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 I told Sister Simpson about the whole thing. Told, told her, her about it? Yeah, I told her that we sent out some of your pictures by mistake, and this woman had saw one of them and fell in love with it at first sight. Oh, me. She promised me, though, she wouldn't breathe a word of it to nobody. Oh, my goodness. Now you did it, Mom. Now you did it. More likely, she done wrote a letter to Elizabeth for this time. No, no. Or oh, she couldn't keep a secret till you could get out of her sight. No, I don't think she'll tell it, Abner. Well, I bet she was on the telephone telling it over the party line before you shut the front gate. Well, if you get in any trouble over it, I'll straighten things out for you. I'll promise you that. Yeah. I'll write Elizabeth a letter and explain the whole thing to her. Think you got a better-looking coat than that you can put on? No. I sent my Sunday coat. Well, put it on. This is an important occasion, Abner. What I love. I ain't said that I'd meet that train yet. No, you ain't, but I have. 
Well, what am I going to tell her after I meet her, Rom? I can't marry the woman. Well, Abner, I'm just trying to help you. You don't have sense enough to speak at all. Swan, I get so disgusted with you, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you ain't trying to help me, neither. Well, you see, if you'll do what I tell you, if she comes in on that train and you ain't there to meet her, she'll more than likely come out here looking for you and then asking everybody around town, everybody in town will know about it. Oh, my goodness, how that won't do. I know, it's what I say, I'm trying to tell you. The thing to do is to meet her at the train and I'll introduce you to her and I believe when she sees you, she'll change her mind about wanting to marry you. Yeah, but what if she don't change her mind, though? Well, you can get out of it some way. Tell her you got her letter too late, that you've already married somebody else. Tell her anything. And I'll take her down to our office when we get out here and show her all the pictures of other men that's come in since we wrote her and and uh, try to find somebody else that she'll want to marry. Well, I wish to goodness knew he'd never thought of the matrimonial business. That's what I wish. Well, I don't know if I'd go so first. Well, I do. I wish I'd never heard the name. Well, the only mistake we've made is when we sent out them pictures of you. Uh, I don't much believe we ought to did that. Yeah, I know Dad blame well that we oughtn't to. Have. Well, just leave everything to me. I'll have this all straightened out to where it'll all come out all right. I hope so. Trouble with you, you all is worry about something ain't no reason to. Oh, wait a minute, Mom. Wait a minute, that's my ring there. Yeah, more like the grandpap telling us he'll be here, Jackson. Hello? Peabody's place. Who? Oh, oh, where? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why, natural, natural. Hmm. Uh, yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. Well, <laughs> yes, Mom. Then you think you say no once in a while? Why, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I wish I could get him to agree with me like that. Well, that's all right. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> yes, Mom. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Well, I know yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, Mom. All right. All right. Uh, uh, goodbye. <laughs> well. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, I don't know. She never did say. Well, what was she wanting? I don't know. I, I never asked her. You mean you talked all that time, never found out who it was or what she wanted? Well, I never talked all that time. She done the talking. Well, what was she talking about all that time then? Why, nothing. Uh, she just said it was the wrong number that she was calling Sea Strunk's place. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, you only come to Grandpap now, Lom. I suspect I better call my hand and get ready. Yeah. There's Dick Hudderson with him. He ain't going, is he? Why, no, not that I know of. Well, hurry up. I'll go on out there and keep them while you... Yeah, well, I'll be out there just as quick as I can find my coat and hat and get them on. Well, howdy, fellas. Uh, hi, Lom. Yeah, howdy, Lom. Where's Abner? Uh, he'll be out in just a minute. He's trying to find his hat and coat now, I think. Well, Abner's always the last one ready any time you go anyplace. Have you got that documentary Squire Skim signed, Lum? Oh, yeah, yeah. Got that right here in my pocket. I sure don't want to forget that. It's the only thing that'll save us. I'm just worried to death about that trial, Lum. Worried and fretted over it all night. Oh, well, now, I don't think a squire's got a chance in the world of winning that suit, Grand Tap. When you fellas produce that agreement he signed, well, I believe they'll throw it out of court. Yeah, I just hope you're right, Dick. I would love to get the best of Squire Skim for once. Yeah. Well, if you win this case, Lum, well, you've got even with him for all the stunts he ever pulled on you, all right. Oh, yeah. Well, here comes Pokey now. <laughs> Hurry up, Abner. We'll freeze to death out here. I'm coming. I'm coming. Where am I? Hey, oh, for goodness. Hi, Dick. Hi, Grandpa. Hey, hi, Abner. <laughs> Hello, Abner. <laughs> well, uh, better get out and let you fellas go, right? Uh, here, Abner. Here, you can get right up here to Grandpa. Well, ain't you going with us, Dick? No, no, I can't, Lum. I, I'd like to, but I can't leave the store today. And you fellas won't need me in there anyway. Well, get in the back there, Richard, and I'll drive you back down to the store. Oh, no, no. Thanks a lot, Grandpa. But you fellas sort of push for time if that trial comes up at 10 o'clock. I can walk back down the store. Won't well, you maybe we better then for... Sure, go ahead. We want to get the trial started on time. We've got to meet that train at 3 o'clock and meet Hortense. Yeah, Mom, <laughs> Tommy, talk me into meeting Hortense. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'll go in there and see what you look like. Well, you uh, better ready. So yeah. long, Dick. Look well, on now. Be careful now. Don't wrap around this thing, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah take her easy now, Grandpa. Don't be trying to go. Yeah, I'm driving this car now. Yeah, if you start taking them curves like you did the last time, I'm going to get out and walk, too. Well, so long, Dick. So long. See you tonight, Dick. All right. I hope you win that lawsuit. Please. Hey, Mr. Abner. Mr. Abner. Hey, wait a minute. Now, what's the matter, Cedric? Hey, stop Mr. Abner there. Why, well, it's too late now, Cedric. He couldn't hear you. What's the matter? Do you want to go with him? No, ma'am. I, I, I've got a telegram here for Mr. Abner. A telegram? Yes, Mom. Well, oh, here, here. Let me see it, Cedric. It might be something important. Now, let me read it. That fellow told me to be sure and see that he got it. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'll look it over here and see what it... Well, 
What's the matter? Some bad news of some kind? We'll arrive on the three o'clock train. Meet us, Elizabeth and Pearl. <laughs> well, poor Abner. If Lum can get him out of this scrape, <laughs> he's good. Ladies and gentlemen, in the following occurrence, the time is evening. The scene? Aboard a streetcar. And here are Les Chalmers and Frank White. Yeah, move over, Les. If you only pay one fare, you're entitled to only one, one strap. Oh, Frank. Where did you come from? Now, well, 300 other people and I just got on a Temple Street. Boy, they do pack them in here, don't they? Yeah. Looks like the Rose Bowl on wheels. Say, what does a man have to do to reach you at your office? Well, depends on who it is that's trying to get me. Why? Must have called you ten times this morning. Did? Well, I was tied up with Big Boss until about 2.30 this afternoon. Why, what was on your mind? Thought I'd take you to lunch. I had an old friend I wanted you to meet, Larry Jennings. You remember, I told you all about him. Oh, sure I do. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't go with you, Les, but I didn't get out to eat until late. You mean you didn't eat until 2.30? Yeah, that's right. Wow, how do you do it? I couldn't, big boss or no big boss. A noon rolls around, I'm hungry, and I've got to eat or I can't work anymore. Yeah, you don't know the secret of Horlick's Malted Milk Tablets, I see. Horlick's Malted Milk Tablets? The greatest thing in the world to help you ward off hunger or fatigue. Well, I always keep a flask of them in my desk. Whenever I begin to feel hungry or tired, all I have to do is get out those tablets and dissolve a few in my mouth. Yeah, they've helped me through many a tough day, I can tell you. Say, they'd be just the thing to have with you on a long automobile jaunt, wouldn't they? Horlick's Malted Milk Tablets, eh? Yeah. I'll have to remember to get some. Uh-huh. My wife goes for Horlick's tablets, too. She always carries a few of them in her purse when she's downtown shopping. And those energy-giving, nourishing malted milk tablets are wonderful, too, for children. Let them carry Horlick's tablets to school with them. They'll nourish while the children work or play. Keep the youngsters from getting too tired or too hungry. Horlick's malted milk tablets come in both natural and chocolate flavors. You can get them in either the small, ten-cent size glass or the other larger sizes at your druggist. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>